Welcome back to Planet Doug. And this morning, my plan was to take my brand new Insta360 ONE X2 camera and mount it on the scooter and go for a first uh, test ride using the camera mounted on the scooter and capture some footage and uh, play around with it. Unfortunately, we are in the beginning or maybe the middle, I don't know, of the rainy season here in this part of Thailand. And it's been raining all day long, all morning. And I've just been uh, here in my guest house room, but still uh, working with the camera, I've been setting it up, which turned into a bit of a small adventure. And then I started using all the various accessories that I unboxed in a previous video. And I did shoot a little bit of test video while I was doing it. So I've learned a little bit about the camera, how you shoot video with it, how you edit with it. Um, and I learned a lot. I mean, my brain is sort of struggling with the input of new uh, camera technology. It's a steep learning curve because it's a brand new type of camera completely new ideas, new way of editing, new way of doing everything, basically. It's all very, very foreign to me. So uh, since this is all fresh in my mind and uh, still pouring rain, well, it's kind of drizzling rain right now, not raining that hard, but I don't feel like riding around on the scooter even in uh, this much rain. So I thought while all this was fresh in my mind, I would just bring all of my gear out onto the table here and uh, talk about it just sort of uh, see what thoughts pop into my head about this uh, new camera. And uh, here is the camera. Let's see if my uh, Panasonic will focus on it or not. But that is the uh, One X2, the Insta360 One X2. And I've learned a lot of new things about it. And some of them are uh, just interesting. Some of them are very good, surprisingly good. But let's just talk about some of the new things I've learned. One thing I've learned uh, I didn't talk about in the previous video, you know, the power button is here on the side and the power button is very stiff. I'm used to sort of soft, mushy buttons like the ones you have on, on a GoPro. They, they feel very spongy and there's a lot of give on them. For a long time, I didn't even know where this power button was because you can't really feel it. It doesn't stick out or stick in and there's no give or take. And then when you press the power button, you really have to press hard. And I guess it's just one press to uh, turn it on. And that's the first thing I've learned about this camera that I like, that the beeps are quite loud because I like to be able to hear, you know, audible feedback from the camera. So when you turn it on and turn it off, you get a loud beep, um, which is very nice. I love that feedback. Plus the tally light, there's a tally light on the front and a tally light on the back. They are both large, very bright, and I love that because once you uh, begin using the camera, this light turns red. Let's see if I can demonstrate that for you with a voice command. Start recording. Stop recording. Isn't that amazing? Um, I've learned that the, the voice commands to start and stop recording, you have to speak very quietly so you don't, uh, ought, you don't accidentally trigger the camera, but it does work quite well, but you have to speak loudly and clearly. Um, just a soft voice won't trigger it, but it does work. And you notice that when it was recording, the light here turns red and blinks and flashes and it's very clear and very visible on both the front of the camera and the rear. But I love that because it you know, gives you very clear visible feedback on whether the camera is recording or not. Right now I'm recording with a Panasonic G85, which is a big modern camera, should have all the features you could want, but even that camera lacks a tally light. So I have no idea whether it's recording right now or not. The only way I can tell is by you know, going right up to the LCD screen. I have to you know, wake up the camera so the LCD screen turns on and I have to look for this tiny red light, the little red symbol on the LCD screen that tells me it's recording. 
but I can't just glance at the camera and see because insanely, in my opinion, there's no tally light. But this has not only a tally light, it has two of them. Not only that, it's large and it's bright. So I love that about this camera. Something else I learned about this camera, which I really like, is that even though it's a 360 camera, meaning it's shooting video in a 360 degree bubble all the time, you don't have to use that mode. You can easily switch over to a regular camera mode. And on the front of the screen, there is a symbol there that a little, it says 360 with an arrow going in a circle. And if you just touch that, it is a touch screen, has touch screen controls. You touch that and it switches over to basic camera mode. So now it is shooting in 150 degrees and when it switches to this mode, the 150 degree mode, which by the way is extremely wide, it's probably even too wide um, if I'm honest, but I mean it's better than full 360 degrees, you know, if that's not what you want. Uh, you can hear the rain by the way, it's picking up a little bit. Uh, my microphone is probably picking up all the rain on the rooftop. But an interesting thing about this mode is that you can choose which lens it uses. Like right now, it is filming with the front lens. So you might be able to see that right now it is pointing towards the camera. So it essentially operates like a GoPro. If I want to film in that direction, I point it in that direction, point it in this direction to film in over there. I can turn it around. Now it's filming me. But there's another symbol on the screen that I can choose which lens. I can switch lenses. Just one click. Now it flips around and now it's recording with this lens. So that's very, very convenient. And if I want to go back into 360 mode, I just touch that button again. Boom, I'm back in 360 mode. So that's something else I learned about this camera, which I really like. In terms of controls and settings, it's pretty easy. You just touch the front screen and then you swipe. So if you swipe from the left, you go into settings. If you swipe up, you go into more settings. Swiping down, more settings. I'm not gonna go into all of those. And if you swipe to the right, that opens up all of the video that's recorded on the memory card of your camera. So you can review video and things like that. And something else I didn't point out last time when I was going over the camera is that the uh, record button is on the front right here. So you can use voice commands or you can uh, press this button to begin. Right there. and to stop recording. You can use voice commands or you can use the button. The rain is coming down harder and harder. It's so noisy here, it's kind of hard for me to concentrate, but I'll power through, uh, see if I can keep my brain uh, ticking along. Um, yeah, there's a whole a lot more I can talk about in terms of the camera because I went through the setup process. Of course, you have to connect it to your phone. You download the Insta360 app to your phone and then you, you launch the app and go through all the steps and then you have to connect with the camera with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And to be honest, I, I, I managed to get that done every time I need to do it, but I've never understood the process. Why do you need Bluetooth and Wi-Fi? And you have to go into your phone and choose the Insta360 camera Wi-Fi network. Like in order to connect to your camera, it has to create its own private internet, like network. So you have to connect with it, which means disconnecting from your Wi-Fi, which is what gives you the internet. 
And then you get error messages that say, oh, on this Wi-Fi network, you no longer have access to the internet. You know, this will be a problem and go into your settings and choose this and do that. And I muddle through it and I get it all figured out, but I have no idea what I'm doing. I just do what they tell me to do, but I don't really understand how all of that works. But in the end, it does connect. And then once you shoot well, then you have to update the firmware, of course, which I did. That at least was an easy process. That was pretty painless. You have to update it, you know, through the, through the app as well. Um, at least that's one way to do it, which is the way I did it. I think it's the easiest way to do it. So I have the latest uh, firmware on here now. And then once you shoot some video, you can edit the video while it's still on the phone. Like when you open up the app on your phone, it shows you all the videos on your phone and all the videos still on the memory card of the camera. So you can actually start editing them while they're in the camera's memory. Or you can automatically download them like via Bluetooth or via Wi-Fi, I don't know what it's using, from the camera to your phone. And I think for really large video files, that's a very slow process. So there might be an easier way to do it. What I normally do with the GoPro is I just take the memory card out, attach it to the phone, and I manually copy the files. I'll probably do the same thing with this, but I haven't, uh, I haven't tested that yet. So I've been, I've been working my way all through that, and um, the editing process for 360 video is completely foreign as well. It's a whole new thing to learn, and I'm figuring that out as well. Very, very interesting. Yeah, very interesting. But uh, let's set this aside for now. Um, I got some accessories with this uh, camera, and one of them was this. Well, let's start with the, the other one, the uh, lens guards. And these are important, I'm told, because the lenses on the camera are rounded and they stick out. So they're exposed and they're very, very easy to damage or scratch them. And once you do that, you know, what do you do? You probably have to send this all the way back to China to have it repaired or replaced or whatever. So, you know, everyone buys these lens guards. And I, I was about to put them on and I went on to uh, YouTube to look for, you know, video tutorials from people who had experience doing it because there are always ins and outs, right? I wanted to find the best way to put them on. And every single video that I found basically said, don't bother, they degrade the video so much that you really don't want to use them. So I never even put them on the camera. These, these uh, videos had examples where they shot the exact same video with just the camera and then shot the same video with the lens guard attached and it was like night and day with the lens guard. It looked horrible. I mean, I don't mind a little bit of a drop in quality. Quite often, a lot of these quality things that people talk about, they buy, you know, a $10,000 lens because it's higher quality. But if you're watching the video on your phone on YouTube, you don't need that really expensive lens because the quality increase doesn't really come across. But with these, it does the drop in quality is significant, really, really bad. So these lens guards, I wouldn't use them. And for protecting your lens, you also have the option of using this. And this is a rubber lens cap. And when I initially took it out of the box and put it on the camera, you know, I was, um, I was pretty pleased with it. I thought, wow, that's handy. It's nice and thick, soft and flexible, and now the lens is protected. And that's true, but then I started thinking about it from a design perspective as I started using the camera, and then little problems started to crop up. For example, I wanted to attach, well, I wanted to plug in the uh, cable to charge the battery, but now, oh, here it is here, I can't open the door with this on because it comes down so far that it interferes with the door. It's very difficult 
to remove the door with this on. So now you have to pull it up and out of the way or something in order to get out of the door. So that's one problem. And also these, the whole point of this is to protect the lens. You don't want anything touching the lens, but with this, okay, it's smooth and it's rubber, yet it has a very tight fit. And every time you put it on, you can see that this rubber is scraping over the top of the lens, you know, both lenses. Like it, from one side all the way to the other, the rubber rubs against the glass before it locks into place, both of them, the top and bottom. And then when you remove it, it's rubbing the entire lens from this side all the way to that side. Like every time you put it on and take it off, it goes over top of the glass and it's such a tight fit, it's really pushing hard. And I know it's soft rubber, but that can't be good for the lens, right? The, you know, hundreds of times over the lifetime of this thing, scraping back and forth. And I was thinking if you're out in the real world and you're throwing this into your knapsack, it's gonna fill with grit, right? Little bits of dirt and dust and sand or whatever's gonna get in there. And now you're scraping it over top of the lenses. So I'm not completely convinced about this. I would want something that just kind of folds over it or, or goes into place without physically dragging over the lens every time you put it on and take it off. You know, from a design point of view, that makes sense to me. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too thrilled with this at the moment. I'm gonna have to think about it and uh, perhaps look for uh, an alternative. Another big feature of the One uh, X2 is that it has a uh, mic adapter. And this mic adapter has a 3.5 millimeter input jack and a USB-C output. So you plug this into the USB-C port on the camera and then you plug your external microphone into the adapter. I have it here, it's quite small. And as I mentioned in my previous videos, I'm very happy that this exists that it is possible to plug an external mic into the camera. That's, that's great. However, there are some issues. Um, in order to do that, you have to uncover the USB-C port, and that means, of course, removing the door. So you click up this little lever here. Very fidgety. And then the door opens up and it has, it stays in place because there's a tiny plastic cord that holds it in place. And normally what you would be doing is just charging the battery. So you would just move this to the side and plug in the USB-C cord, but that doesn't work with the mic adapter. And even if it did, um, you wouldn't want to do that because anything that sticks out the front of the camera is gonna be visible to the lens. Everything has to stay on the side. So what you have to do in order to use the mic adapter, you have to fully remove this door. And to do that, as I've learned, basically all you do is pull out the cord. It's got a little plug on the end and then you grab it and pull and out it comes. And now here's the door separate. And of course, as soon as you have something this small, loose, you're gonna lose it unless you're extremely careful, this thing is just begging to be lost. I mean, now where, where do I put it? I have to have a special compartment. I know I always put it there. And then of course, once you're done with the microphone, um, putting this back in place is very, very tricky because it's a tiny pinhole and you've got to line up this little cord with that pinhole, you know, and, and try and wiggle it. And you know, it's basically like, so like, threading a needle. It's very difficult to do. And with, if this is uh, loose and wobbly at all, it's not, it's not gonna go back into the hole. So this whole design of this door, not good. I predict that in future generations of this camera, they're going to improve this. But for now, this is what you're stuck with. You have to remove this. And once it is out, 
then you can take your mic adapter, insert it into the USB-C, and that's uh, what it looks like. And interestingly, it doesn't sit flush with the camera. It actually has a set of legs, two on the bottom and two on the top, that hold it away from the camera a little bit. And I'm not sure why it's designed that way, but that's how, uh, that's how it works. And one thing I was pleased to discover is that it clicks into place quite firmly. So at the moment anyway, it's brand new, everything is brand new it does not feel like it will come loose. It's for some, I don't, there must be some sort of mechanism that I'm not aware of, something that clicks into place because it is, it is locked onto there um, firmly. And now in order to, I mean, this whole system, by the way, is designed to be used with the uh, Rode Wireless Go microphone. This is the uh, receiver for the Rode Wireless Go. And this receiver, is what you have to attach to the uh, camera in order for in order to use it. it this camera doesn't have any kind of cold shoe mounts or anything like that so it has no you know natural way you know to attach this to it but luckily a company called Ulanzi stepped up and they created a special mounting bracket so that's the bracket, that is, it's called the Ulanzi PT20. And in order to use this, you have to have the, you have to have the camera mounted using the tripod base. Like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't attach by itself. So what you have to do is get your selfie stick or whatever grip you're using and this hole on the PT20, you put the uh, tripod screw through that and then the camera on top of that. It's a little bit of a tricky uh, process. Tighten it down and there it is in place. This company, Ulanzi, uh, quickly became one of my favorite companies in the entire world. Maybe my favorite company because they think things through. I swear Ulanzi should send a consultant out to GoPro, to Insta360 and have them available 24 hours a day for the designers at those companies just to help them think about all the details and to design their accessories and their products so that they work well because I'm very, for what this is, I'm very, very impressed with it. So what happens is that this mount takes advantage of the clip that comes on the road and you clip it on from below because the um, microphone port is over here on the, uh, on the receiver. So if you, if you put it on from the top, it would be pushed up against the camera I didn't realize that at first, you know, because I just assumed it would go on from the top and I did that, but then I had no access to the, uh, the port there. So it turns out you have to flip it around and then clip it on from the below. And I was worried that it would just slip off because it's hanging upside down, but it's designed to be the perfect size so that the clip itself actually locks into place. Let's see if you can uh, hear it click into place. And once you have all of this put together, then you take the cord that comes with the PT20, the right angle part plugs into the road, and this part plugs into the adapter. And there you have the Insta360 ONE X2 set up as a vlogging camera. I realize I haven't talked about this at all or why it's so important that everything be on the side because if you notice 
the way this is designed, everything is on the edges of the camera. And the only reason this works is that the Rode microphone system is so slim. It's the same width or narrower than the camera. So if you turn the camera on its side like this on edge, notice you can't even see the microphone. And that's the key to the whole system. And the reason that's important is that this 360 camera has two lenses and two sensors. And this, the front one is filming everything out here. The rear one is filming everything back here, but the two images overlap here on the edge. They call this the stitch line. And the software in the camera takes the two videos and stitches them together and deletes this part right here. So it actually removes anything that shows up in this stitch line. It's kind of a magical thing, but it has to be very, very narrow, which is why the selfie stick is narrow and why this whole unit is, is as narrow as it is. If anything comes out to the front, it will be in the camera view and the software is not able to make it invisible. For it to be invisible to the camera, it has to be inside the stitch line. To be honest, I'm pretty pleased with this. I haven't done a comparison of the audio between this and a GoPro or the Panasonic or any other camera, but I did shoot some video and I tested whether the, you know, it registers the microphone and it does. Once you plug it in, you get a little symbol there of a microphone that tells you an external mic has been plugged in. You don't get any levels or anything like that. I don't think you can adjust the levels at all. All you can do is adjust the levels in the road itself. But you can see that it's attached and I shot some test videos and it recorded everything just fine. Audio sounded clear, sounded good to me. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. And in terms of this overall setup, Considering that um, this is the only way to attach an external microphone to this camera, it would be difficult to improve on. I mean, it would be better, as I keep saying, to have a microphone jack in the camera itself, especially if it's you know, even on the outside of the camera, because then you wouldn't have to remove a door, you wouldn't have to insert this adapter. You know, this plug could just go directly into a tiny hole right on the camera. That would be brilliant, but that doesn't exist for most cameras these days. Um, so this is what we're stuck with and it seems to work uh, quite well. I've also been playing around with all the mounting options and all the grips and, and things like that because I don't know if I'm unique in this fashion but I, I usually want my cameras to do certain things that most of the you know, accessories out there don't allow me to do. And uh, most people don't seem to have a problem with this, but I don't know, it's something, it's something I want to be able to do. For example, you've got a selfie stick like this, and this can, of course, you, know, you can hold it on your, with your hand and then you can mount it onto your motorcycle or your scooter, but then, I would like to be able to, you know, just walk into a coffee shop or a restaurant, sit down at the table, and then I want to drop this onto a tripod mount, just so I can put it on the table on a small tripod. But this selfie stick, it doesn't have any kind of a tripod system built into it. So you have to, you know, come up with some kind of a, a rig. Um, either you, you know, you can unscrew the entire system here and then remount it on a tripod but obviously you don't want to do that once you have this attached. You want to leave it on here so you do have the hole down here at the bottom. And what I've come up with is not the best, but it's this unit. This is a tiny tripod set of tripod legs that comes with various GoPro accessories. And then I put an adapter on the top, one of these um, tripod adapters that comes with the... Uh, Insta360 motorcycle mount bundle. So you get four of these inside the bundle and that's very handy. So I put one on here and then I can screw that in. 
and now I have, you know, tripod legs and I can put this down on a uh, coffee shop table. This isn't ideal because these are very, it has a very small footprint. So if you have the uh, selfie stick like collapsed like this, then it's okay. I can put it down and it's fairly steady. You still, if you, if you just hit it even slightly, it's going to go over. So you have to be very careful, you know, if you're uh, using something like this. You really want legs that are wider than this, but something this small. I, when I walk around, I have this in my pocket all the time. You know, this is just in my pocket. I have it with me constantly. So it's not that much of a problem, you know, just to take this. You know, whether it's a GoPro or the Insta360, pop that on, and now it's a tripod. And I can drink my coffee, and I can still talk into the camera. And then when I want to go outside and put it back on the scooter, you know, I just unscrew it, put this in my pocket. So the legs aren't built into the grip, but I have to attach them. And that works out pretty well for me. Of course, if it had legs built into it, I suppose that would be even better. But now you're talking about a heavier, a heavier stick, a more complicated stick. And as it gets wider, it gets too wide for this stitch zone, and it will start to appear in the 360 video. So that, that's kind of a problem. Um, however, I take things one step further. So you've got the, you know, holding it in your hand, which everyone does. You've got putting on tripod legs, you know, which everyone, you know, a lot of people do. But there's a third situation, which is gripping it to something because quite often even the tripod legs don't help you out. There's nowhere to put the tripod down and that's where my favorite um, GoPro accessory comes into play and that is this one of course which is the GoPro uh, Jaws Flex Clamp and it has this very large set of uh, jaws and those jaws can be clamped over almost anything. You can clamp this, you know, on a chair, on a fence post, on a tree, on a tree branch, on, you know, on the handlebars of your scooter, on the table if it's narrow enough, you know, almost anything. So for me, this is my preferred vlogging setup. This is what I normally use. So I have the grip on the bottom, which is very useful. The grip also works as a handle. And then I have the uh, gooseneck, which is very handy because, of course, it can be bent in any direction you want and it can be turned around so the GoPro can be aimed in any direction. And I have my, Go my uh, GoPro mounted on a quick release so it, it pops off and then I can move it anywhere I want and then put it back on again. And I've designed it so that these little tripod legs can be gripped by the jaws. You basically take this the way it normally is and open up the legs and then you take the jaws and you clamp it over the base and now this also turns into a tripod. So this for me is like the ultimate rig which allows me to do anything I want. It has hand grip, it has jaws grip, it has a tripod stand, you know, they can basically do everything and it's the only, it's the only rig I'm aware of that can do all of this. So I wanted to adapt the Insta360 ONE X2 to the JAWS, you know, and there are a whole bunch of ways to do that as it turns out. Um, one way is to get rid of all of this because this also is attached with a, um, you know, quick release buckle. You know, it just, this separates from this as well. So what I can do is dive into my uh, motorcycle bundle and then you take one of these uh, buckles, put that into place, take another one of these, put that in, a little thumb screw to hold it in place of course. Now I've converted the Jaws Flex clamp to a tripod mount.
And now that I have a tripod mount there, I can just screw on the Insta360 uh, selfie stick. Just take this, this whole unit, screws onto there, and boom, there you go. And of course, this is a quick release buckle, so I wouldn't get rid of my, uh, well, put my glasses up here so they don't keep getting in the way. You know, you can just pop, pop this off, take the GoPro, you know, pop it on, back and forth like that. And as part of the uh, motorcycle bundle, you also get an extension arm. And what I've done with this extension arm is that I put a quick release buckle on one end and a tripod mount on the other. And now this can also be attached to anything that has a quick release buckle that could be mounted on your scooter or it can be mounted on the uh, Jaws Flex clamp like that. So you could use this extension. And if you want even more reach and flexibility, then you can take the, the gooseneck itself put it onto the Jaws Flex clamp, which also has a quick release buckle, and then the extension arm goes onto the uh, gooseneck. So there's kind of limitless possibilities once you have access to all of these adapters, you know, that come within the uh, motorcycle uh, mount bundle. I have a hundred more thoughts about the uh, camera at this point, but I think I'm going to uh, leave it there. Those are the first thoughts that sort of bubbled up to the top of my brain as I've been sitting here. But of course, uh, I can't uh, stop at this point without at least a little sample of a video and audio coming from the Insta360. So what I'm going to do is I have it, uh, right now I have it set to uh, 150 degrees. I'm kind of vlogging mode. So right now it's in vlogging mode and I have the Rode Wireless Go plugged into it. And I see a little microphone symbol. So I think everything is working fine. And I have it set up on my favorite a selfie rig so I can walk around and uh, take some video. So I'm going to uh, start recording over here and uh, you can hear what it sounds like and uh, yeah, what it, uh, what it looks like. Use a voice command, you know, because it's so far away. Start recording. Didn't work. Start recording. Didn't work again. Try one more time. Start recording. There it worked. So to be honest, I don't know how useful the voice command is going to be in the future because I was speaking quite loudly and the microphone is right here you know, right underneath my shirt and it still didn't register, but um, it did eventually work, but we'll see. I may have to always use the uh, the button on the front. But yeah, there is the uh, video from the, uh, this is the 150 degree. I'm only using the front camera right now. I'm not shooting in 360 video. And something I didn't mention about that is it's limited to 1440p. So it's higher resolution than 1080p, so I'm pretty happy with that. You know, I'm, I'm not a big 4K shooter anymore. 4K video files are just too big, too cumbersome to, to shoot, store, and edit. And it doesn't look any better on a smartphone, I don't think. So I've been shooting in 1080p on all my GoPros. So on this camera, you know, shooting in 1440p is not a, uh, you know, it's not a uh, big deal to me that it is only shooting in 1440p. It has a... For um, 360, it shoots in 5.7K or 5.3K, but of course that's for the entire 360 degree circle in, you know, up bottom left or right. So in fact, the 360 video, the, the real resolution once you edit it and output it is much lower than that. It's not actually 5.7K or any, anywhere even uh, near it. So anyway, this is the audio and the video from here and I'm just going to go for a short walk up and down the uh, courtyard here at the hotel. All right, this is me just uh, walking. Rain has stopped, so everything is wet out here, but I can uh, walk in around a little bit, show you what it looks like. And uh, 
As far as I under, as far as, far as what I've read and what I've seen online, the uh, Insta 360 has very good stabilization. So walking and talking like this shouldn't be uh, an issue at all. On the screen, it looks very dark, though I did dial in a bit of exposure compensation because I thought it was going to be a bright sunny day. And now, for the first time ever, I've switched into a 360 mode and it feels so weird. I'm so accustomed to holding a camera right in front of my face and then looking at the lens and then pointing the camera at myself or pointing the camera, you know, somewhere else. It's just so weird not to be doing that. Um, it would take a long time to get uh, used to this, where all the uh, perspective just gets added in post and I don't have to aim the camera at anything. Now I have the camera sticking off to the left a little bit. <laughs> Could be uh, quite exciting. But of course, when you do that, you have to be aware that you have something valuable sticking that far out. Can't cut too close to anything because if you do, you're going to uh, hit it like these boys on their uh, bicycles up ahead. But this is as far as I wanted to go. I'm just going to the uh, coffee shop. again just going into the uh, coffee shop strawberry yogurt smoothie and there it is <laughs> 70 baht seemed like a better uh, better idea than a hot coffee I'm still learning how to use this uh, camera and I'm getting very hot and uh, flustered wow it's very nice it's a uh, what I was hoping for, something big and substantial. It's really good. Yeah, it has a really nice uh, strawberry, uh, straw I mean, strawberry and yogurt flavor. Really uh, tangy yogurt, which I like. Mm. And I noticed that the uh, rain clouds were moving back in fast, so it was time to get on the scooter and head for shelter. And I have the uh, 360 going again. Again, it's so weird. I can't figure out the way it works. It's not instinctive. So I have no sense of where to mount it on the camera, on the uh, scooter, and how to angle it. It's just really weird. Can't get used to it. 